guys, Jamie here, keeping it coy. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, welcome. Hope to earn your subscription today. Um, bit of an unscheduled uh, update today. Um, I've been asked an awful lot of questions about my um, little black upflow filter at the uh, at the black back blue vat. It's a tongue twister and a half. Um, so I'm going to give you a bit more of a, a detailed description of that. Um, yeah, and uh, I've got a bit of a late night feed on the uh, on the fry as well, so I'll quickly whack that in this video as well. So without further ado, I'll spin you around and uh, give you a tour of it. Hey guys and girls, a little quick late night video clip of the uh, fry, as you probably saw, just floating past the window. They've had their first... Uh, mini orange the uh, little fry in here today and uh, it took them a, probably a couple of hours to uh, to work out what it was but as you can see by the other half i don't know if you can kind of tell there the water's going to be a bit cloudy again today but it is absolutely empty there are a few traces of it down the back there completely shredded though and uh, I don't know if I can get underneath that one, or is it there? Yeah, that one also is completely shredded. Um, so yeah, they obviously enjoyed themselves. They made one hell of a mess on the bottom of the tank look down there at the back. Get your nose out of the way. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I now know that the uh, fry like orange. I'm just getting ready for bed myself. Uh, so it is time for their last feed of the day. It's kind of a, uh, a tradition with me because their light comes on as the sun starts going down and then I turn it off after their last feed of the night. So it's not freshwater shrimp this time, it's just their usual uh, pellets if I can get roughly the right amount. That's it. Tip it in the hole at the back. They certainly don't hang about anymore, look. That amount of food, about four weeks ago, would have lasted them 10 minutes. That amount of food now lasts 30 seconds. But, yeah, they get between six and eight feeds a day, so they ain't complaining. Yeah, as always, the big ones go straight to the top and munch all the big pellets. But uh, as you all know in my mix in here, I've still got some uh, little sinking bits and uh, the other bits of, uh, what's it called, Coppins food that sinks and the little fish generally go around sucking all that up off the bottom. And when the big fish have finished all their big pellets, which they pretty much have, um, they then go down to the bottom as well and clean up what the little fishes have left. Um, I can get that orange out tonight because that's currently stuck on the air pump or air filter and while my fingers are in there wet chuck that in my bucket right as well excuse me fingers if they get in the way of the camera oh that light's hot Gotcha. But yeah, that's what's left of these oranges. Absolutely nothing. Look, turn it inside out. He says. Yeah, nothing in there at all. Look. <laughs> so yeah, they've worked out what an orange is. Oh, I've now made a mess of the outside of the tank. But that's why I have my handy fish tank tea towel. Because I'm always making a mess of the fish tank because I've always got to put my hand in there for some whether it's cleaning the filters or fishing out their food that they've not eaten and whatnot. But there you go. So yeah, it looks like I'm gonna be getting the uh, siphon out tomorrow because that's a lot of their waste and an awful lot of orange waste. So uh, to be honest, some of the orange waste they might they might even 
munch that during the night. But whatever's left down there in the morning, I've got the morning off. My first job until one o'clock tomorrow, so I'll uh, get the siphon out tomorrow and clean the bottom of the tank. Um, it's not the day, unfortunately, to clean out the big filter. Uh, that's not tomorrow, the next day. I could do it a day early, but I like to do it on my uh, regimes because I've only just done the uh, air filters a couple of days ago. Um, and basically like my videos, they get done now in the middle of the week. The two air filters and that all get done on the same day now. Um, and then that gets done three days, three or four days later. So it's Saturdays and Wednesdays. Same as my videos, because uh, while I'm waiting for them to upload so you lovely people can watch them, I'm cleaning out the fish tank. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, as you can see, they're all happy as Larry in there. So, as you can see, I've cleaned out the bottom of the tank today. Um, fish are all looking super fantastic. But yeah, all the orange from the bottom is gone. Can't believe how much they polished that off. It took them a while to get going. But they uh, polished it off good and proper. They've literally just been fed. And uh, obviously you saw them getting fed uh, a little while ago. So, or last night. So uh, I'm not going to be feeding them right now. But let's go and have a look at the uh, little black up flow filter. So here's the filter in question. My little black up flow filter. I think one of the best small filters. Evolution Aqua ever made yes it is an ea filter it's called the evolution aqua pure pond filter that's just a bit of sellotape not a hole or a leak so 11 watt uv in there with its little window it's turned off at the minute because i've got the uh the 9 watt uv in there on saving a bit of electricery so as you can see the water outlet is that pipe there there's no tap or anything on that it's just free flows and that's uh, just trickling into there on the old uh, bio this filter is suitable for up to a pump up to four and a half thousand liters uh, an hour um, and this filter whether it could handle it or not i don't know but it this filter is suitable for ponds so evolution aqua said of up to five thousand liters so you've got your water inlet here, which is on a tap, so you can control flow going in and out and stop flow and stop water back flooding to your pond. Around the other side, you've got your waste outlet, which is currently turned off. Exactly the same taps that they're now using on the uh, Tempest that they've brought out. And as we've all seen videos of that, the Tempest uh, does, is quite prone to leak which is why the waste pipe is currently sat in here you can see there's a good few uh, drips coming out of there so uh, yeah I just rest that in there because it does uh, tend to leak a tiny bit so inside the filter so it doesn't overflow I'm gonna have to turn that tap it's probably a mess in here because I haven't cleaned it out yet today but the one thing I like about this filter is how easy it is to clean so let's now the water stopped flowing let's get the uh, lid off one-handed right. so in this top section you've got a tray of k1 media um, phone's gone a bit of a funny color apologies for that it's very sunny today but yeah this is a tray of k1 media so i'm going to oik this out and show you how simple and easy it is to clean this i'm going to try and do it one-handed as you can see there's an awful lot of muck on there and there's probably an awful lot of muck in there but the pond itself I'll show you that uh, in a bizzle is obviously uber crystal clear so to clean this out all I do I've always got a bu bucket of the uh, the pond water and um, sat here in there give it a good shake to get all the stuff from the outside a bit harder doing this one-handed but let it drain a bit and then give the K1 a good shape and we do it again submerge drain shake and i normally do that three or four times but 
as you can see, well, you probably can't see, but in there, look, the K1 is all now nice and clean. So just stick that to one side for a second. We then grab the waste pipe from that sitting in there. And now stick that in my bucket. This is what I water my plants with, this water. And now turn the waste tap. And there goes all the mucky water. Now they get out of the way or you're gonna get wet. <laughs> Sitting there looking at the bucket. Right, so just let that drain for a second and I'll snap back to you. Right, that's all now drained, as you can see. I'm getting wet feet, but this is how I do it. So in there then, you're left with a bit of the muck. So all I normally do, which I don't know where my little bucket's gone, but I've normally got a little bucket sat here that I just uh, switched it up. So if I, I've lost my little bucket, which I quite often do, because I use it for other things, dip the K1 media in there. It's all the muck through a lot easier with a bucket or a watering can. But normally with a bucket or a watering can that I use for this I can rinse it out properly. But you can see the general idea, that's most of the muck gone off the uh, off the shelf there. Tiny bit of muck still down there, but meh. Once you've cleaned that out, you drop your K1 back in the bucket. So this is your upflow filter. Let me open the pump a little bit, actually. We'll close the waste valve first. That would help, wouldn't it? So we'll close that off. Right. Once that's closed off, I'll open this a little bit now so you can see what happens. And I'm only going to open it a little bit because otherwise it overflows, which uh, the lid has got two little prongs that keeps this down. But obviously, as we all know, K1 floats and it keeps coming up and up and up until it gets over here and then the water's coming up through the basket and overflows the side which you'll see any second it's just about to break the surface and there's the k1 at the top of the basket now look i've only got a little pump on this at the minute i think it's about two and a half to three thousand liters an hour so as you can see it's a lot higher than it would normally be because them handles are normally below so I'll turn it back down a little bit so we don't get too much overflowage and that's not overflowing there so as you can see if I've got if I've got this valve open fully this whole trickle tower obviously will be filled up but the water comes over here that would normally sit at that level so you can see there you get a much better flow when it's down where it should be. But water comes down over your trickle filter. It helps with uh, aeration and everything. And then, as EA would say, this is where they would recommend you put your pure pom bombs, which, as you can see, I've got a few in there. This is a bag of... Um, what's it a bag of? Carbon. There we go. <laughs> a bag of carbon in there. And I've got some uh, lava rocks, some... Uh, zeolite, old bits of foam from when I used to cut foams for me uh, of a backy shower and then at the bottom I've got a bit of biohome uh, and a bit of uh, see if we can get down there, a bit of biohome look and some alpha grog and some rings and a few other bits and bobs and some filter floss which looks like it needs changing again so that's that this basket again really easy to clean out because this basket literally just lifts out and if you had just stones and whatnot in there again you just give it a good rinse a good shake water comes out of the grid and the basket at the bottom stick that on there for a second just look at the balance there we go and then in there you can see the water returns back to the pond through this one so I'll put up a picture now of uh, the two the two uh, pumps uh, two filters sorry that 
EAD. This is the 5000 version. They did a 10,000 version as well. And there's a, a picture that shows you the water flow um, and what it does. Now, unfortunately, they don't make these anymore. But obviously, if I wasn't talking to you guys, this literally takes me less than five minutes to clean out. Um, doesn't even take me anywhere near five minutes to clean out. Grab that out, give it a shake in there. If that's dirty, grab that out, give that a shake in there, empty that, job done. That only takes 20, 30 seconds to empty as well. And that's uh, and that's that. But yeah, I'll uh, upload a picture so you can have a look in uh, a bit more detail. I'm gonna put the lid back on and show you how much more of a float uh, we get. As I say, this uh, filter can handle up to a 4,500 litre an hour pump. It does say it's for ponds suitable up to 5,000, but at 4,500 litres, the, the water does start to rise in here, only ever so slightly, gets to probably about that high at 4,500 litres an hour, because that's the uh, pump I used to use on it. Right, if I open that now fully, you'll see the water in there start coming out a lot faster. There you go. As I say, it's only about two. I think the pump itself is two and a half thousand liters that I've got in there. It might be three thousand, but it's going through the pressure filter first, and up a bit higher into this box, and then back into there. So I'm probably only getting about two thousand liters an hour um, going through this vat. But the vat itself is two thousand liters, and obviously I always keep it a couple of inches uh, down, so it you know it's not not holding 2,000 litres exactly anyway, but it's a bit sunny today, so we probably won't get a good view of the fish. There's one. Thank you for the people that commented and told me that was a Benny Kiki Koryu. I thought it was, but uh, I wanted to be sure before I start calling it. And I remember in a previous video, I kept calling uh, one in there a Makashi. Well, uh, it's not a Makashi, it's uh, a Jim Matsuba. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't know why I kept calling that on the cache. Um But yeah, so that's the uh, filter in a bit more detail. Um, I'll put, uh, as I said a minute ago, I'll put some pictures up now of the uh, like the advertisement uh, photo that they did. They did a 5,000 one and a 10,000 one. So here's the advert for the one I bought. I bought the 5,000 uh, model, came with a 4,000 litre an hour pump and some pure pond balls. Can't remember what I paid for it, but as you can see, they've got two models there. This is my one, it's the 5,000 litre model. Comes with an 11 watt UV, and they claim that it's suitable for ponds of up to 5,000 litres. Uh, max flow rate though is 4,500. This is the 10,000 model. Now I don't know what the max flow rate is on this, but they claim again it's suitable for ponds of up to 10,000 litres comes with an 18 watt UV and as I say you'll check have to check what the max flow rate is so this is the way the water flows so it comes up pumped up from your pond across through the UV up your upflow filter which is your K1 media basket over the weir through the trickle filter and then returns uh, through your pond basket back into the pond and obviously your pond basket is where you would put your media your pond balls or your uh, sponges and filter floss. Just bear in mind if you're using filter floss, it does need cleaning very, very regularly, um, daily at least. Um, so uh, yeah, overflow is quite easy from there. Um, and lastly, this is a listing that I found uh, currently on eBay. There are a few on there. Uh, this is of the 10,000 model, um, 18 watt UV, it does come with a 4,000 liter an hour pump, but Again, if you do your homework, find out what the max flow rate is. Obviously, you can put a bigger pump on there um, if you want. So I hope that's been uh, to use um, of, of use to uh, to some of you out there because I have had a lot of questions about that filter. And when I had a visitor the other day, he uh, fell in love with it. So there are still some available on eBay. As I say, unfortunately, EA stopped making these. Um, but the one that I've just shown you is an X display model. So theoretically is still brand new and um, you just have to do your homework if you want to put a bigger pump on there um yeah any other questions on it give me a shout hit, hit me up in the uh
comments down there but yeah absolutely love this filter um i'm never never getting rid of it um because it's just so easy to clean two minutes and it, it's you know clean as a whistle so i'm, I'm not getting rid of it um, i'll probably be putting it on my uh, fry tank when i uh, change from my fish tank to a uh, new fry tank so uh, yeah hope that's helped some of you um, thanks all for watching like subscribe and subscribe and share there be there be there um and uh, we'll catch you all on the next one